Greetings, and welcome back to another episode where I answer questions from viewers on YouTube, Instagram, and Reddit. The theme here is to provide a quick answer followed by a five minute explanation. Today's video is dedicated to Amenotef and Winko Eareads of Reddit. Amenotef or Fetanima asks, if you use rockered four wheels, eventually you end up closer to flat? Question mark. On the other hand, Winko asks, could you please tell us more about protective gear? What are you using? Why use it? The ups versus downs? What do you look for? So first, I'll quickly go over Amenotef's question. If you use a rockered four times setup, you will end up closer to flat. But if you rotate your wheels, you can easily maintain a rockered setup and keep them from going flat. To answer Winko's question on protective gear, I am using a helmet and wrist guards because my brain and my hands are my money makers. If I injure either one of them, it is highly likely that I will be out of work. There are a lot of questions from him, so I will go over them in more detail in a bit. Now, let me explain the rockered setup going flat. If you have a 4 times rockered or even a 3 times rockered setup, they will become flat if you do not rotate them. Rotating wheels is an, is an essential part of maintaining the integrity of your wheels and setup. It also keeps them in good health. If you intend to keep your wheels rockered, regularly check the rocker and for sharpness of your wheels. If it's becoming obvious, obvious that one side of the wheel has been shaved off, maybe you're doing slides or you're just skating on it a lot, then you're probably due for a rotation. In my experience, as long as I rotate my wheels regularly, I don't run into any problems keeping them rockered. On the other hand, if your intent is to flatten your wheel setup, you can just put the bigger wheels on the front and back, which will create an anti-rocker, until the two wheels level down to the size of the inner two wheels. Now, I might not have completely understood the context of your question, I, but I hope that answered it. Now I will answer Winko's question about protective gear. His or her question was, what do I use and why? First, I want to say that you should absolutely always wear protection, helmet, wrist guard, elbow pads, knee pads. Now I'm going to go over my hierarchy of protective gear. Wrist guards are a must for me. I will never skate without them because number one, I've fallen enough times to learn my lesson. And number two, I've had several clients that used to be skaters in their teens, broke their wrists or the bones in their hands, and to this day, in their 60s, are still suffering from the remnants of those injuries. They find it hard to hold pens, hard to write, difficult to hold things, they can't play the guitar, it's hard to type, it's just not worth it. The helmet comes next. Combined with the wrist guards, I am protecting my money makers. My brain and my hands bring home the bacon. They are my bread and butter. I wear my helmet when commuting because I am much more integrated with car traffic compared to skating slalom, freestyle slalom, or Friday night skates. Number three, knee pads. I've banged up my knees a good number of times, failing slides and learning new tricks in slalom. I rarely wear these when I'm just skating around because, you know, I just don't need them. But when I'm learning something new, I mean, why the heck not? Elbow pads. I never wear these because I catch myself with my hands and that's what my wrist guards are for. If I had weak arms where I would be unable to catch myself in a push-up position, then my elbows would definitely hit the pavement. In this case, I would consider wearing elbow pads. Catching myself with my hands requires the ability to absorb impact with my arms, which includes the triceps, the pecs, which is your chest muscle, and the deltoids, which is more or less your shoulder. Without proper strength training, one might instinctively lock their elbows, and that can cause your elbows to hyperextend or it can go further up the chain and potentially dislocate in your shoulder. So 
be cautious. Lastly, let's go over crash pads. I bought myself a pair, I wore them once, and I never wore them again. They did not protect my tailbone. It actually hurt more. They can be pretty stiff. So a short note on what to look for. The only thing that I would suggest is to find a pair of wrist guards that will cover the entire palm of your hand and one that has a stiff backbone or a semi-stiff backbone that covers the back of your hand and wrist. Wrist guards need to protect the bones in your hand in addition to your wrist. Coverage of the palm and the wrist together is the best way to do it. The stiff backbone that covers the back of the hand and wrist guards protect your wrists from hyperextension. Very quickly, pros and cons. Pros of protection, you're protected, it's your suit of armor, decreases the chance of bruising or breaking something. Cons, it's uncomfortable, it's hot, and it may potentially decrease your range of motion. Again, that's it. I hope I answered your questions. I still have plenty more footage to go. So if you have a question, drop a comment and I will do my best to answer it. Thanks for watching and have a great day.